Model Engineering for Beginners, Part 46. Cutting threads in the lathe using a die if the metal is harder than brass. Here you see three examples of steam unions. The one on the left is a commercial item and I made the other two. I didn't really finish the two that I made. I just made them for the video and I'm going to leave them this way because one day I will need to make an adapter. And with the physical size of these fittings, I have a choice. I could make an adapter down to quarter by 40, quarter by 32, which is something that I frequently have to do. The most popular thread adapters that I make are quarter by 40 to quarter by 32. Recently, I had to make a new stud for my traction engine. I'll show you why shortly. And I made this stud using a piece of alum bronze, and this is very hard stuff to machine. The steam fitting on the right of this image was what was left over after I made the stud. Now I'm going to explain why a lot of these dies are slightly adjustable. If you're cutting a very hard piece of metal, often you cannot cut it in one pass. You have to slacken off the two outer grub screws and then open up the die with the centre one. After making the first cut, the thread will be too big. And yes, I am aware that this is not running very concentrically it's only for a quick test. It's not concentric because I can't hold much of the metal in the chuck, because what was left over after I made the stud was not very long. I'm using some cutting lubricant, but it's very important not to get any of this on the metal part that is held in the chuck. This is an extreme pressure lubricant and it will cause the chuck to slip around the work. After the first cut, I back off the centre grub screw and then I take another cut and each of these passes removes a bit more metal. After each pass with the die, I try a union nut on the end, and it seems to fit OK after the third pass, and when I check the status of the grub screws, the die is not open very much at all. It's more or less the size it would be if it was just sat on the bench. In this clip I'm showing you the chuck jaws, and you can clearly see that there are ridges in the jaws. This is a good idea for holding different pieces of work, but the surface area of the chuck jaws that grips the work is less, so the work spins round and then it looks like this. Once I've successfully cut the thread to the correct size, I reset the die to a neutral state. The die is still in the die holder, but without much pressure being applied to it. The final part of the job is to clean the die thoroughly, ready for the next threading operation. I mentioned that I made a new stud for my traction engine. All of the studs on the traction engine are made from phosphor bronze because it's a copper boiler and this is a really good idea. I must warn you though that this red type of phosphor bronze is quite difficult to work and it work hardens very quickly. I removed the stud from the traction engine because the thread was damaged but now after I used a pair of mole grips the thread is worse than damaged. It's completely destroyed and that's why it looks like this. I made a new stud using a piece of alum bronze and it took some doing, but it was well worth the effort because the new stud is very strong and of course the thread is perfect. What I'm about to do next is make a blanking plug for a boiler. This is obviously a safety valve and it has a thread which is half inch by 26 threads per inch. And the first part of the job is to adjust the die so that I don't cut a thread that is too small but I immediately ran into a problem. I couldn't open the die wide enough with the centre screw to match the thread on the safety valve. I removed the die from the holder and it was the amount of debris and oil around the outside of the die that made it impossible to open it any wider. Not helped by the scrub screw, which was a bit chewed up and needed reprofiling. I fitted the small screw into the lathe chuck and I used a chamfering tool to reprofile it. Once I put the die back in the holder and adjusted it, then it was possible to screw the safety valve into the die. Now I'm going to thread a steel part. This is making a steel blanking plug. I found a suitable piece of hexagon steel, and here it is in the three jaw chuck of my Boxford lathe. I couldn't use my Smart and Brown lathe for this because it's currently fitted with a four-jaw self-centering chuck, which is not very good at all in hexagonal parts. The first thing to do is to turn it to the correct size, which is half an inch in diameter. 
This is a very simple, plain turning job, so I'll tell you about my visitors. Occasionally, I do get visitors coming to see me, and coincidentally, this month, I've had some visitors, and they were all from Canada. The first visitor was a man called Richard, and we spent an enjoyable couple of hours talking steam and other things. Yesterday, the second visitors from Canada arrived, a man called Duncan and his sister Wendy. I picked them up from a local station, and after a fairly brief chat and a look round the workshop, etc., we set off and went to York. My first wife from about 50 years ago is called Fran. She lives just across the road with my eldest daughter and her husband and my first two grandchildren. And we all went out together for a meal in York. We went to a restaurant that was originally the birthplace of Guy Fawkes and it's right next to York Minster. Both of these Canadian visitors really seem to appreciate York Minster. The meal in the restaurant was excellent and we had a very pleasant evening. Now it's back to the job and I'm applying some cutting lubricant to the part of the steel I'm going to thread. As you can see, I'm using a half inch by 26 threads per inch die. I've expanded the die for the first cut, so off we go. You will notice that I am not using a tailstock die holder. I'm using a regular die holder with the tailstock chuck, which, by the way, is fully open, so I don't get the problem I got the last time. Please watch the previous video if you want to see what happened. In this clip you can see just how much swarf is generated and fills the holes around the die. That's why it's very important to keep the die clean at all times. After the second cut, with the die slightly closed, I got quite a good thread. Even though it's covered in swarf and lubricant, I can see that the thread is good. The final part of the job is to reverse the piece of metal in the chuck and part it off. I wouldn't have to reverse it in the chuck, but this is only a short piece of hexagon. General obvious rules for parting off. Take it easy, don't go too fast, run the lathe slowly and use plenty of lubricant. Some smaller lathes benefit by running the lathe in reverse with the parting tool upside down, but I've never had to do that. This parting off operation was successful and the piece of metal fell into the chip tray. To improve the finish of the end slightly, I used a carbide tip tool and faced across it. But to be honest, I'm doing this far too fast, so I didn't really get a good finish, but at least I got a clean finish in the center. It is, after all, a test piece, which is just a blanking plug. The last part of the job was to use a chamfering tool to remove the corners. Once I stop the lathe, you can see that the surface finish on the end is a bit spirally. And here's the finished product, a perfect blanking plug to fill a half inch by 26 threads per inch hole that the safety valve normally screws into. I put the blanking plug in my box of blanking plugs. You can never have too many blanking plugs in the workshop. I'm running a bit low on quarter by 32 threads per inch blanking plugs, so I'll make a few more of those. When I make them, I will use a long piece of brass hexagon, because brass is much better for blanking plugs, as they don't rust. That is it for this one. If you've watched the other two videos about threading in the lathe, you should be quite good at it by now. And the good thing is, you won't have to make the mistakes like I did in the previous video. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.